Today we'll be going over different vo geometric vocabulary. So this will be the first time that you guys see major geometry. So the previous ones was kind of a review. Um, a lot of what you're going to learn now will not be a review. It will be brand new things. So 3.1 is geometric vocabulary. Your essential question is how is knowing geometric vocabulary important? The first word we're going to go over is a point. And here are two examples of points. And whenever we go to name them, you actually write out the word point. And then it's just the letter. So point A is the first one. And the second one is point B. Um, and a point is a one-dimensional object. It's just a location in space. It is not, you can't actually see it. Anything that's one-dimensional you can't actually see. It's just a location in some three-dimensional space. So you could imagine just point your a finger in front of you and that would be a point, but you can't see it. It's, it has no depth. It has no volume. It's just a point. Next, we're going to look at a line. Here are two example, examples. And whenever you name lines, they can actually have two different lines. Um, lines go in both directions forever and ever. They are a two-dimensional object. Um, and they have no starting point or ending point. They go in both directions forever and ever and ever. So this first line could be named line CD. And the symbol for a line when you name it is a line on top with arrows at both ends. So line CD or DC. You must, must put the symbol at the top. Otherwise, I don't know if it's a line, a line segment, or a ray. So you must put the, that symbol at the top. The second one is EF or FE. Next is a line segment. And here are two examples. Line segments are also two dimensional objects, um, but they, I'm sorry, one dimensional objects, but they have a definite beginning and a definite end. So um, you can still write them in both, both directions because it, you could start at both points and go to the other point, so it doesn't matter. Um, so this first one is GH, and then the symbol for this one is just a straight line on the top. Again, you must put that line on top. So it's GH or HG. And then the second one is IJ or JI. Also, the line up above, both of these lines have segments as part of them. So this right here would be segment CD or DC. And this portion right here would be segment EF or FE. So lines also contain line segments inside of them. So you could find one either way. The next thing we're going to look at is called a ray. And here are two examples. Now rays will only have one name because they have a starting point and then it goes in the other direction forever and ever. So again, um, rays are two-dimensional objects that have a starting point and go in one direction forever. So in this case, my ray is KL and it must be named KL. It could not be named LK. And the symbol at the top is a straight line with an arrow on the right and it will always be that way. It has to be an arrow on the right and you have to first list the point where the ray starts. So this other ray can only be named NM because it starts at N and goes through M. And again, your symbol at the top is a line with an arrow to the right. Next, we're going to look at an angle. And here are two examples of angles. Now, angles can actually have three different names. Um, and you just have to remember that the pointy end of your angle, this, this letter right here, has to be in the middle of the names. 
So first, um, your angle could be named C-A-R, angle car. This is the symbol for an angle. It can be named angle car. It could also be named angle rack, R-A-C. Or it can be named angle in just that pointy part, pointy letter. So angle A, which I'll tell you what that pointy one is in a minute. It has an actual name, it's called a vertex. On this next one, it could be named angle bus, angle sub, or angle U. The most important part is that your vertex is always in the middle or your only name. Same thing with this one, vertex is always the middle letter or your only name. Next, we're gonna look at adjacent angles. Adjacent angles are two angles that share a ray. So they're two angles that touch each other. Here's an example. So in this case, my angles also have numbers on the inside. So that's another way that you can find angles be named is if they have numbers on the inside, it would be angle one and angle two. So in this case, angle one is adjacent to angle two. It can also be named this way. It could be angle BOG is adjacent to angle um, G-O-D. They can also be named angle G-O-B is adjacent to, and this one can also be named angle D-O-G. The only thing you cannot name any of these angles, none of them, you cannot name them angle, Z, angle O. And um, the reason is angle O, is it talking about angle one? Is it talking about angle two? Or is it talking about the whole thing that's angle BOD? And there's no way to know that. So you cannot name adjacent angles with the vertex letter. They must be named either with the numbers on the inside of the angles or with three letters. That's the only way. Actually, I wanna do vertex first. Let's do vertex. In these two examples, our vertex is both I, so it's just the pointy end of your angle. So for both of these, the vertex is the vertex is I. Now congruent angles. And here are two examples. So both of these angles are 56 degrees, and that's what it means to be congruent, is that they're equal to each other, basically. Um, so we have two ways that we can write this, because we have, well, actually three ways, because you can also name these by their vertex. So you can have angle CAT is congruent to, which this is the congruent symbol. It's an equal sign with a tilde on the top, or the Inye symbol. So angle cat is congruent to angle dog. Angle tack is congruent to angle god. Or angle A is congruent to angle O. It can be named any one of those three ways. Next would be a plane. And no, this is not the plane that flies in the sky. This is a geometric plane. Here's an example of one. This can be named two different ways, um, and they're always they always look like this. They are two-dimensional objects that go in all directions forever and ever. So it's you can think of it as like a piece of paper, um, is what a plane is, or a tabletop, anything that's flat like that. But paper is actually more descriptive um, because if you look at the paper right at your eye level, um, sideways you almost can't see it. Now a plane is that way, you can't see it if it's facing flat straight at your eye level. But if you tilt it just a little bit, then you can see it. And planes technically go on forever and ever, so you could 
Think of it as like a piece of paper that never ends. It goes on forever and ever. It's the biggest piece of paper you could ever, ever imagine um, is what a plane is. So this plane could be called plane. And this is a cursive J. So there will always be a cursive letter and it can be just called plane and then that cursive letter, whatever it is. Or any three points on that plane will also name it and it has to be three. They do not have to be in any specific order. So plane T-O-P, plane P-O-T, plane O-P-T, plane O-T-P, however you want to name it. But all of those are ways that you can name that plane. The next thing we're going to look at are called collinear points. So collinear points, um, BA are collinear, AD are collinear, and BD are collinear. And you only need to list two for collinear because collinear just means that they all lie on the same line. And um, you only need two points to identify a line. So it would be um, AB, AD, or BD are collinear. Now, if you were to pick one off the line and then I, any one of the letters, and then I also, it, they would be called non-collinear. So B, I, A, I, and D, I are called non-collinear. The last one are coplanar points. And here's an example. Um, and to name coplanar points, you need three. Because remember I told you to name a plane, you would need at least three points. So any three points, TRU, TRS, RUS, however combination you want to do it, are considered coplanar. So RUS, TUS, um, US, no, that one I already did. Um, R, T, S, and any combination. Um, and they don't have to go in order, you can pick them in any order. R, coplanar. Now if you chose D as one of the points, they would be called non-coplanar. So T, D, R, um, D, R, U, that's a D, not a P. Um, and then D, S, U, and lots of other combinations are called non-coplanar. And that is it. So don't forget to go down to the bottom of your notes and write your summary.